I made a pistachio, cranberry, cherry, and gooseberry risotto. What's setup. this? What is this baby powder looking stuff here? That's hazelnut and walnuts mixed with some tapioca maltodextrin. I wanted to give it a little bit of um, You know what it is? It's garbage is what it is. What you did on that dish is inappropriate and ultimately kind of disgusting. Congratulations. How are we doing, boys? MasterChef is a cooking competition show where skilled amateur home cooks compete in high pressure challenges and skills tests to win the title of MasterChef. The way the show works is that these contestants are under the tutelage of three extremely skilled and qualified judges while they make their way through these challenges. At the end of every episode, one or sometimes more contestants are forced to give their aprons back to the chef and walk out of the MasterChef kitchen forever. And I just want to say I love this show. My girlfriend and I got really into it back in 2020 when we we moved in together and everything was still shut down from covid and we ate this shit up dude it is so fucking brilliant it's just brilliant trash reality tv but you don't have to take just my word for it the show has been adapted to over 70 different versions in 70 different countries the show was brought over from the uk to america in 2010 and featured a panel of three judges that were absolute titans in the american food industry you had gordon ramsay a michelin star chef who had already proven himself to american audiences through his shows Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares, and The F Word. You had Graham Elliott, a Chicago-based chef who got his first Michelin star at 22 years old and was nominated for three James Beard Awards. And you had Joe Bastianich, a Nepo baby from New York who just really loves to be an asshole. <laughs> All right, so it's not that Joe Bastianich doesn't know food. He owns over 30 restaurants. He owns the food chain Eataly, which is like a grocery store for high-quality European goods. And his mother is Lydia Bastianich, one of the most famous Italian chefs in the world. He may not be a chef, but he has been in kitchens his whole life and he knows how the restaurant industry works. He's a good businessman. I mean, as good of a businessman as one can be, I suppose. But on MasterChef US, Joe is also just an insufferable douchebag. So you don't serve garlic bread in your restaurants? No. Oh, so there's no such thing as garlic bread in Italy. So I think it cheapens it and makes it less than it could be. I disagree. I disagree. If you want to do something interesting, take the sausage, make a pate, spread the pate on the toasted bread. I'm just trying to push you to the next level. Would you like a bite of garlic bread? That's the, kind of that's the kind of restaurants you guys do. Would you like a bread? No, I don't want any garlic bread. You're such a snob. Are these are raw, whole garlic cloves in here? Yeah, it's raw. When you go out to eat, I give you whole cloves of raw garlic to eat? No, chef, they don't. We're here to judge a contest. We're not here to eat raw flour or raw garlic. When you give us crap like that to eat, it gets to be almost kind of personally offensive. You understand that? Yes. Not only am I advising you to step up your cooking game, I'm also advising you to have a little respect. It's a sous vide arctic char over green lentils. I wanted to sous vide my fish today so I can kind of pr produce a... The name of the show is Master Chef. Okay. What do chefs do? Chefs cook. Right. So it's not master orator or master tell me about what my intention is about cooking. It's Master Chef. You think you're going to impress us with things like sous vide, emulsify? No. So at the end of the day, what you have here is basically destroyed lentils because I can see they're all exploded and overcooked. You have a bunch of herb scraps with no dressing on them. You got a piece of fatty, nasty looking bacon on top of some poorly conceived cooked Arctic char. You've consistently disappointed us. Now, before I get too far into this, I do want to say that judges in shows like this do serve an important narrative purpose. Because even if the show isn't scripted or written a certain way, these judges have an important role of creating drama and tension. And in reality TV, that drama and tension 
is the narrative. The early days of American Idol would not have been nearly as entertaining to watch if you didn't have Simon Cowell and Randy Jackson there just ready to rip apart anybody who walked in through the door. And Randy and Simon's more harsh criticism was balanced out with Paula's more toned down and subdued criticism. And we like judges like Randy and Simon because we like to see people who are bad get ripped apart, but we also like to see them build up the people that they see something in. When you do this sort of shtick right, it comes across as like a coach or a teacher giving you some sort of tough love. And when you're watching MasterChef, you can see that Joe and Gordon play the same roles as Simon and Randy do. But at the end of the day, Gordon plays this role a lot better than Joe does. Gordon's there as a stern but ultimately helpful mentor, and Joe's just there to rip you apart. And yeah, it's fun to watch people get ripped apart sometimes. It's one of the best things about watching a show like this. But Joe has this habit of going over the top or making statements that are sometimes just ignorant. Like all of his statements that imply that Asian food, all Asian food by the way, is somehow less refined or less technically advanced than European or Western food. You have starred European restaurant food versus hawker stand street food. Right. I'm a little bit confused, Bowen. Is this an Italian pasta dish or a Chinese dumpling dish? A Chinese pasta dish. There's no pasta in China. Okay, it's a dumpling wiper. What you did is take Vietnamese flavors and techniques and somehow manipulated them into seeming like it's a European Michelin star dish. It's got a lot of explosions of flavor. Every bite's a mystery and a discovery at the same time. You were doing something Asian. I was a little bit surprised, first of all, because I just don't think it's the right kind of mushroom. These mushrooms are definitely scream something Eurocentric, you know, either French or Italian or you know, something much more refined. He sees anything that isn't Eurocentric as unrefined, and it's just weird. Joe doesn't seem to only have an issue with Asian food, but Asian men as well. Here's a clip from MasterChef Italy that got circulated a couple years ago of him visiting an Asian nail salon in Milan and just making the most out-of-pocket statement he possibly could. Allora, hai trovato un fidanzato italiano o fidanzato cinese? <laughs> Sei single? Yeah, sì. Ma io personalmente che i dei uomini cinesi sono hanno un po' di difetti a volte sono un po' curti. Uh... Sono non adeguati in certe situazioni. Da questo punto. Joe also constantly berates contestants for not going outside the box or not thinking hard enough about what the next step they could have done is. However, if they go too far in the other direction and they try something else and they fail at it, Joe just lays into them also. He will absolutely rip you apart for doing what is too traditional or standard, but if you're not traditional or standard enough, he'll also lay into you. So you gotta hit that middle mark of being just exactly right all the time. I, I, I don't understand. She's been nice to you, but the whole thing with you is you have this very cavalier attitude. You don't know what you're cooking, what dish you're making with 10 minutes left. Then you come up here and get misty-eyed with us, like, oh, poor me again, I got screwed up, and I'm getting tired of it. Because if you were smart, you would duplicate a plate. The fact that you're not even thinking of playing this game properly is really annoying. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna taste this. You want 15 of the same dishes up here? here putting your spin on everything you make because you want to show us how cutesy and intelligent and crafty you are well that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from and then you could show your friends and the six people who told you were good how cutesy and smart you are when you're home cooking at dinner parties while the rest of this group goes on and competes to become the next master chef so i want pasta cooked properly because you know what that's the only thing worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial thank you for nothing Joe is also so aggressively attached to his Italian cultural identity that any change on an Italian recipe or an Italian food is a personal attack on him. Like, look at how mad he gets that this girl Felix put macadamia nuts in her tiramisu. It looks like man. I, That's I... true. You saw the standard, we put it up there, we asked you to execute it, and you come back with this. It's so disappointing. If it's bad, you will go home. Why did you put nuts in here? I like mac nuts. Macadamia nuts? And an Italian tiramisu? 
Are you not understanding what we're doing here? And the end of this clip helped me segue into this next section about how he's so bad about kicking people while they're down. Like, yeah, Felix's tiramisu looks like shit, and she knows it, and you know it, so you don't need to lay into her too much harder, but you just keep going and going and going, and that's just fucking crazy. And yeah, Gordon and Graham aren't super nice either, but Graham's at least gonna sugarcoat it a little bit, and Gordon's only gonna get really pissed off with you if you do something stupid. Gordon's also willing to coach you and train you and do everything he can to help you build yourself up, but Joe just wants you to be good. And if you're not a master chef from the second you walk in the door, you're a waste of his time. Like just as another example, here's Graham tasting Felix's tiramisu right after Joe. I'm sorry, you have to eat this. Well, it's not even eating it, it's, it's looking at it. You show like more finesse than anyone in the kitchen. Like things are beautiful and like, that's not you. Come on. And it's like the smallest plate possible with it like almost falling off the side. I mean, I'm not trying to like hurt your feelings, no, but you I know, know that. I know, like... I know. It's terrible. I just want to <laughs> fling it off the balcony. Like, you can tell that he's disappointed and that he's upset and that he really doesn't like what he's tasting, but he's also not being a complete and total douche about it. She came up to the podium crying because she already knew the tiramisu was awful. You don't need to keep digging in. There's one other thing that Joe does a lot, and it's throw food in the trash to prove a point. And honestly, that's probably one of my favorite little things that he does because it's just so silly and stupid. It's just so over the top and pointless. Like, sometimes he does it without even tasting the food. If you're gonna serve us crap like that, then you're really wasting our time. <laughs> There was also one instance in season three where the contestants were doing a restaurant takeover challenge, and Joe said that the blind contestant Christine, who at this point had made it up to the top six of the season, said that she would be more beneficial in the coat room than in the kitchen. Where would you put her in a situation like this? I would have her at the end finishing a dish. Definitely coat check room. No, come on. She can't see. Have you seen she that she puts food on the plate? Yeah. This is a live kitchen, Michelin starred restaurant. She can't do it. She's a liability. No. And yeah, we can totally argue all day whether Christine won season three because her story was just so inspirational rather than her being the absolute best cook. But for Joe to completely disregard her ability in that scenario was just pretty shitty. For me, Joe is everything that's wrong with the hospitality industry. He's an out-of-touch owner who coasted on the popularity and fame of his mother to get started, and he spends his days bullying and harassing people that he sees as beneath him. He wants you to be great when you get to him. He doesn't want to waste any resources training you or making you better, or rather using his staff to train you or make you better, since he's not actually a chef. To me, the strongest signifier in this during the show of MasterChef is the fact that throughout all of its seasons, Gordon, Aron, Graham, Christina have all offered people jobs in their restaurants, especially people who finished out in the top 10. But to my recollection, Joe has done this a grand total of zero times. Because to him, if you're out, you're a loser. You're of no use to him. And sure, I'm almost positive that almost none of these jobs are actually taken up on, and I'm sure they're just kind of consolation prizes. It doesn't matter if these offers are genuine or if any of the contestants ever take up the opportunity, because to me, what this signifies is the judge acknowledging your skill and your level of tenacity. And I'm not saying these judges should never be mean. There's a few times where them being dicks has been completely warranted, especially Joe. Like that time in season two where Christopher was so bitter about not being in the top three that he started eating his plate while Graham was critiquing Jennifer's food. I think Jennifer sucks. Um, it makes me feel like because I don't think she has as much 
food knowledge as I do. So how does it feel to be up here again? Feels awesome. Feels okay. really great. The puff pastry, adding the textural contrast against the creaminess of the lobster mashed potatoes, all of it works beautifully. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you so much. Hey, Christian, why don't you have the same respect for these people that they do for you? Put the silverware down and behave like you belong in this kitchen and show these people the same respect they show you. Because if not, I'm going to personally come over there and throw you out of here. You show no respect, and I'm not going to deal with it. Joe took a leave from the show after season five to focus on MasterChef Italy and running his restaurant. So he's not in season six, seven, or eight, but he returned in season nine. And ever since then, he's gone a little bit easier on people. It kind of seems like both he and Gordon are trying to repair their reputations as insufferable hard asses. But for Joe, for me, the damage is done. At the end of the day, MasterChef is just garbage reality TV and I love it, but Joe, can you just, can you just tone it down a little? That's all I'm asking. Just please just tone it down just, just a little bit. Just a little bit, my guy. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like or subscribing to my channel. That kind of engagement really helps me out a lot. And leave me a comment about who your favorite MasterChef contestant was, who your favorite judge was, or what your favorite moment was. My name is Isaiah, and thank you for watching my video.